This story is called The Horrid Pop-Out Stick. Grumps the Goblin was a very horrid fellow. He had a curious stick made of ash with a knobbly end. He used to stand this stick just inside his front gate and then waited for someone to go by. As soon as anyone passed his gate, the stick used to pop out and hit the pixie, brownie or gnome, until he howled for mercy. Then Grumps laughed fit to kill himself, and the tears rolled down his big nose and dripped onto the garden path. He thought it was a great joke. The pop-out stick chased the passers-by down the road, thumping them all the time, and made them very angry indeed. But as Grumps' house was right in the very middle of the village, people simply had to pass it, so there was no help for it. When the goblin wanted to play his horrid joke, someone always got caught. Nobody could stop Grumps putting his stick in the front garden whenever he thought he would. Sometimes it was there on a Saturday, and sometimes on a Monday or a Thursday. Nobody ever knew when it would come popping out and thump them. The village folk held a meeting about it at last to try to find out how they could stop Grumps playing his unkind trick. If only we could get the stick to give him as good a whacking as it gives us, he'd soon stop it, said Twinkle the Pixie. Yes, but the stick would never turn on Grumps, said Gobbo the Brownie. I've got an idea, suddenly said Skippity the Gnome. Listen. He told them his plan, and they all nodded their heads, for they thought it was a good one. We'll do it tomorrow, they said. You shall be the one to try the plan, Skippity. If it comes off... Well, you shall have ten gold pieces for yourself. Skippity ran off. He went to the witch who lived on Bumble Common and asked her for a roll-away sixpence. Well, you must chop up that big pile of logs for me first, said the witch, who never gave anything for nothing. So Skippity set to work, and in two hours' time, the witch saw that he had chopped up enough wood to last her a fortnight. Here is the roll-away sixpence that you wanted, she said. It will be quite an ordinary sixpence until you whisper the word roll away under your breath. Thank you, said Skippity gratefully. He popped the sixpence in his pocket and went whistling home. Then he sent a note round to Grumps, asking him to come to a party the next day at four o'clock to last till six. The next afternoon, Grumps, Gobbo, Twinkle and many more elfin folk went to tea at Skippity's. He gave them buns with jam on, a chocolate cake and red apples, so they were all very pleased. Then they gave Grumps the Goblin a last chance to mend his ways. Grumps, please don't put your pop-out stick by your front gate any more, said Skippity. Ho, ho, said Grumps. You don't suppose I'm going to stop that, do you? No, no, it makes me laugh too much. The gnome said no more. It was time for his guests to go. It was night-time outside, but the moon was shining brightly. Skippity felt in his pocket to make sure that he had the roll-away sixpence there. Goodbye, everybody, he said. Then, just at his front gate, he dropped the sixpence. It made a little tinkling noise and then lay still. Everyone looked to see it and pretended to feel in their pockets. Whose is it? asked Skippity. Not mine, said Gobbo. Nor mine, said Twinkle. And everybody said the same, except Grumps the Goblin, who was rather greedy and not at all honest. As soon as he heard them all saying that it was not their sixpence, he pretended to feel in each of his pockets very carefully. Dear me, it must be mine, he said at last. Yes, I had a sixpence and it's gone. I'll pick it up. He stooped down to get it, and at that very moment, Skippity whispered under his breath. Roll away, he said so softly that Grumps didn't hear him. Just as the goblin's fingers touched the magic sixpence, it stood up on its edge and rolled away. Grumps went after it. The sixpence rolled a bit farther still. The gnomes, brownies and pixies watched in delight. Every time that Grumps got near to it, the sixpence rolled a little further, and soon the goblin was halfway down the street. He was quite determined to get the sixpence. All the others followed him in excitement, wondering if Skippity's plan would work. Grumps went on and on, and the sixpence went on too, always a little way ahead of him. He went down the hill and up again. He went along Primrose Lane and crossed over the bridge to the high street. The sixpence took him all round the market square, glittering in the moonlight. Grumps puffed and panted and saw nothing but the sixpence. 
Then the little magic coin ran down the road that led to Grumps' own cottage. The goblin followed, not noticing where he was going. All the others ran after him, getting more and more excited. Soon the sixpence was outside Grumps' house. It lay still on the ground, just outside his front gate. The goblin gave a cry of triumph and darted on it. At that very same moment, it rose in the air, hit him on the nose, burst into smoke and disappeared. And also at the very same moment, out rushed the pop-out stick, which Grumps had left on guard by the front gate when he had gone out to tea. It pounced on the goblin and began to whack him hard, just as it had thumped all the other villagers from time to time. "'Who's that whacking me?' cried Grumps in a rage. But just as he turned to see, the moon went behind a cloud and the street was in darkness. Grumps couldn't see what was thumping him, and he got very angry. He tried to hit back, but he only bruised his knuckles against the knobbly end of the stick. Then he got frightened and ran away down the street. But the pop-out stick followed, as it had been taught to do, and had a merry time whacking him on the shoulders as he ran. How all the pixies, gnomes and brownies laughed to hear what was happening. It had happened to them so many times, and they were delighted that Grumps should fall into his own trap. They followed after him, keeping carefully on the other side of the road, for they didn't want to get a sudden whack from the stick too. Help! Mercy! Thieves! Help! yelled Grumps. Skippity Twinkle Gobbo! Help! Help! But nobody would help him. In fact, they couldn't, for no one but Grumps himself knew how to stop the stick. For a long time he didn't guess what was hitting him, for he didn't know that he was near his house. At last Skippity thought he had had enough, so he shouted to Grumps, "'It's your own pop-out stick after you, Grumps. How do you like it? It's a very good joke, isn't it? We are laughing about it just as much as you laugh when it goes after us.' Then Grumps gave a yell of surprise and anger. He shouted a magic word, and the stick rushed up the street and back into the house. Grumps went too, and the listening folk heard his door slam loudly. What a fine plan that was of yours, said everyone to Skippity. You have well earned the ten gold pieces. You shall have them tomorrow. The next day, Grumps the Goblin couldn't get up because his back was hurting with all the thumping. Then the others showed what kind hearts they had, for they took him a nice jelly, swept up his house for him and lighted his fire. Grumps lay in bed, very much ashamed. Hi, he called to Gobbo, who was lighting his fire. Oh, take that old stick and break it up for firewood, will you? It'll start the fire nicely. Then the others knew that Grumps was sorry and had learnt his lesson. Gobbo broke up the pop-out stick and put it on the fire. It soon burnt up and made a curious green flame. Then it gave a sound just like a sigh, and that was the end of it. You forgive us? And we'll forgive you, said Skippity to Grumps. So they all forgave one another, and after that lived happily together. Skippity got his ten gold pieces, and out of it he bought Grumps a nice new stick with a gold band round it with his name on. It was just an ordinary stick, but Grumps liked it very much indeed. Wasn't it kind of Skippity? <laughs>